witnessing my wife having sex with other men to save our marriage. Now she's leaving me for one of them and I'm left grappling with a profound sense of emptiness. Over the past few years, I've struggled to discern right from wrong, and I take full responsibility for the consequences of my actions. I naively believed that by fulfilling her desires, I could ensure our marital bliss. Despite my own reservations, I followed her lead, hoping to maintain her happiness. I find solace in confiding my thoughts to a stranger, unburdening myself of this heavy emotional weight. At 36, I've been married to Bonnie, who is 32, for seven years. Our relationship blossomed from a long-standing friendship within our shared social circle, eventually leading to marriage. Initially, our union was harmonious, devoid of any significant challenges. However, after several years, Bonnie began expressing dissatisfaction with the monotony of our lives together. Despite our efforts to reignite the passion through various activities reminiscent of our courtship, her discontent persisted. It became evident that something more profound was lacking in our relationship, a realization that I'll delve into shortly. Strangely, she wasn't spelling out what she actually wanted from me. She would just rant and crib about getting bored. When I asked her what she wanted me to do, she would say, look it up. There are so many new things going on. People are experimenting with new stuff to keep their bedroom life thrilling. So, I looked up. I came up with various ways to spice up things. We started with role plays, sex toys, and then slowly we moved to BDSM. We even took a crash course for that. Yes, it was shocking for me too. I had no clue of its existence. There are professional trainers who train you for that. It was fun. I had no complaints. Everything we did was within the realms of marriage, and no third human being was present in between us. Our relationship got better, but my problem was not over. Bonnie was enjoying every new thing we tried, but her happiness didn't last long. She used to get over it very soon and wanted something new always. It was like drugs to her. The initial dose that makes you happy doesn't keep you satisfied. When you do it over and over again, you always want more. After a year of this, I ran out of ideas and almost gave up, but we still continued with the stuff I mentioned above. Things got wild after our South Asia trip. We were put up on this public island in South Asia, and we found several massage parlors there. There was something off about those massage centers. Firstly, it said erotic massage in your private M slash M. Secondly, one of the highlights on the advertising board said, your identity is confidential. Like what the hell? Bonnie was curious about the whole thing. She went and inquired more about it. It was about getting a massage from the opposite gender with more focus on the private parts. I rolled my eyes and got over it, but Bonnie didn't. She pestered me to try it at least once. She portrayed it as some kind of Asian cultural stuff, but trust me, it wasn't. On the day of our return, we finally tried it. So, I enter the private cabin. There is a woman in a bikini waiting for me. I lie down. She starts with a back rub. She literally throws herself on me. I can feel her front, you know what I mean, on my back, and then she asks me if I want her to get rid of her clothes. I panicked and said no and asked her to stop. I honestly thought that to be some sort of scam or honey trap or something. I got dressed and rushed outside the cabin. I called Bonnie, but she didn't answer. I asked for her in the reception and got to know she was inside enjoying the session. I was anxious, not knowing what to do. I spot a man who looked like someone from the States. Very hesitantly, I approached him and asked him if this is what they do inside, and he said yes, they provide all kinds of services, not only the massage, all means, literally all. He assured me it wasn't scammy, but they charge you for all extra services. I was partially relieved that Bonnie was not caught in any scam but dreaded what was going on inside. After a couple of hours, she came outside with a wide grin on her face. Her young Mar followed her to the front gate, smiling and talking to her flirtatiously, and she reciprocated. We went outside, and she asked me how it was. I was like, you knew what happens inside. She rolled her eyes and said yes. I asked her, did you like it? She grinned and said, yeah, it was so much fun. The guy was so good at his work that I just wanted more and more of him. I asked her what she did, and she replied, just normal stuff, erotic massage, and some tongue action down there. She nodded, making me feel like it was all normal. That's how we got into the game of actual exploration. Allowing my wife to be intimate with other men in an effort to salvage our marriage seemed like the logical solution at the time. 
Yet, now she's leaving me for one of them, and I'm left grappling with a profound sense of emptiness. Over the past few years, I've struggled to discern right from wrong, and I take full responsibility for the consequences of my actions. I naively believed that by fulfilling her desires, I could ensure our marital bliss. Despite my own reservations, I followed her lead, hoping to maintain her happiness. I find solace in confiding my thoughts to a stranger, unburdening myself of this heavy emotional weight. At 36, I've been married to Bonnie, who is 32, for seven years. Our relationship blossomed from a long-standing friendship within our shared social circle, eventually leading to marriage. Initially, our union was harmonious, devoid of any significant challenges. However, after several years, Bonnie began expressing dissatisfaction with the monotony of our lives together. Despite our efforts to reignite the passion through various activities reminiscent of our courtship, her discontent persisted. It became evident that something more profound was lacking in our relationship, a realization that I'll delve into shortly. We came back home, and she couldn't stop talking about the benefits of massage. I told her I had no problem with normal spa and massage, which we get often, but not that erotic BS. However, she convinced me to try a couple's massage once. After some pushback, I agreed to try it. Together, we called a professional to our home, and he did what he had to. Bonnie used to be very happy and excited during this entire phase. Our relationship indeed sparkled, and I felt we were again a newlywed couple who just couldn't get enough of each other. This went on for a few months. Then, as usual, Bonnie's excitement faded away sooner than I anticipated. One day she comes and says, You know, couples who open their marriage are the ones who live happily forever because they are bonded by love and not any other boundaries. She eventually arrived at the point that we should also open our marriage. Obviously, I flipped out. She showed me several research articles that supported her claim. I said we already have professionals coordinating this stuff, threesomes, BDSM, etc. She said she no longer enjoyed it with professionals and now wanted to try it out with normal individuals. She showed me many married couples who were into this couple swapping and stuff, and they had happy long marriages. I was still not convinced when she suggested that we try it out with one such married couple and see how it goes. She promised that we would stop if I didn't feel comfortable. I agreed to give it a shot. I won't say it wasn't fun or I didn't enjoy it, I did. But it felt like taking an illegal substance. You know how it feels, it gives you pleasure, and you enjoy the highs, but when you wake up the next morning, you feel bitter about your choice, you feel hollow. Eventually, we got into all kinds of stuff, swapping, hookups, and whatnot. Every time it was about, let's do this once, and then it was like, okay, this would be the last time. All this continued for over two to three years. Initially, I used to go silent after every session, but then I stopped. Maybe everything happened so fast that I wasn't able to process it and just went with the flow. On a side note, yes, our relationship strengthened. We didn't fight, and Bonnie used to be happy. We had set up some ground rules like no emotional cheating, never inviting anyone in our bedroom, not hiding anything from each other, and if we ever get feelings for anyone, we'll stop seeing them and confront each other. A year ago, I met this woman, Ella, and felt that she had the vibe I've been looking for. Yeah, before that, let me tell you that my count in hookups was way, way less than Bonnie's. Women generally have an easier way out finding men. Bonnie did set up a dating profile for me but my problem was I was looking for people with similar mindsets, but people there on that platform wanted actions and not vibes. So after a while, I stopped trying aggressively. Coming back to Ella, I met her at work. She had a breakup recently and was single at that time. She was a contractual employee hired to assist me on a short-term project for a year. We bonded over work, and eventually, I told her about my marital status. She was amazed that Bonnie and I were so open-minded. Ella and I started meeting outside work hours, and yes, we got into a physical relationship. But the thing was, I was getting emotionally attached to her. Not only in bed, I wanted to meet her outside. I stopped chatting with other women, and even when anyone hit on me, I avoided them. My equation with Bonnie was not going great. Though we lived in the same house, we had our own worlds. Yes, we were there for each other whenever we needed our better half, but the love was slowly sneaking out. Before I met Ella, there were times. When I wanted to come out of this, I even discussed with Bonnie that we had had enough of all this, and now we should switch back to a monogamous relationship. But she was not done yet. She said okay, but not now, we are still young and unexplored. 
Then I met Ella, and I stopped whining about this to Bonnie. After a few months, I realized I was getting serious about Ella, which meant I was emotionally cheating on Bonnie. So, I confronted Bonnie and told her everything. She freaked out. She said it was indeed cheating, and I should immediately stop seeing Ella. I tried to push back, but she laid down a choice, either Ella or her. I chose my marriage and gradually got distant from Ella. She understood my coldness, and by then her contract was about to be over, and she left the office. I felt lonely again, more than lonely, I had anger and frustration for Bonnie. This was not the life I wanted. A week ago, I was sitting idle, and Bonnie was in the shower, her phone was vibrating. Out of curiosity, I sneaked in. We never checked each other's phones, I mean, we knew what we both were doing, so what's the point? There were incoming messages from someone saved as his future. I opened the chat and found she was in a relationship with this man. In the most shocking revelation, she was planning on divorcing me, and he was doing the same with his wife. It gave chills to my bones. I looked for other chats but found none. She was not chatting or seeing anyone else but this man. I looked up the timeline and found they had been in a relationship for more than a year now, even when I confessed to her about Ella. She was swearing her love to this man, yet she didn't tell me and instead asked me to break up things with Ella. I wanted to confront her right there, but by now I had become numb. I don't actually feel anything, so I just kept the phone back and pretended nothing happened. Bonnie and I are almost strangers living in the same house. After a week of knowing this, I don't feel angry anymore, it's more of a betrayal. I have an existential crisis, what have I done with my life? I don't want to confront her, I just want to vanish from here. I have a therapist appointment, but that's after four days. I have to sort out other stuff too, but not before letting out my emotions. So, I'm here. I know I called for my misery, and now I have to deal with it. Update 1, thanks for the incredible support, it really means a lot. I knew I would be called weak, simp, and all sorts of names. Maybe I'm all of it. A stranger's comment cannot hurt you more than a betrayal from your loved ones. I have attended two sessions with the therapist, and it helped me clear my head. I basically had two choices, confront her and burst their racket or silently sort out my stuff before they attack. I followed the second one. I pulled out my contribution from the joint account. I wanted to change my workplace because this one was close to Bonnie's, and under no circumstances did I want to cross paths with her. I discussed that with my manager, and he said there might be an opening in another location, but that's in the next town. I said I don't mind, he's yet to confirm that to me. I'm also seeking other job opportunities far from this place, maybe in a neighboring town or outside the country. I'll look for the place once the job thing is sorted. I also reached out to Ella. Call it my guilt or desperation, but I wanted to tell her the truth. I asked her for a meeting, but she refused. I insisted that I needed to confess the reason for my separation, and she agreed. I told her the entire story, also about Bonnie's plan of divorcing me and my counter plan of ghosting her. She said she was sorry for me but wanted to stay out of this mess. I respect her decision and didn't contact her again. I hired a divorce lawyer to sort out the matter. Our marriage was complicated, it wasn't a case of infidelity. Emotional cheating is not a thing in the law, not that infidelity is. Criminalized in states, but it plays a part in alimony. A gentleman from this community cautioned me that a good lawyer can make a lot of difference in alimony and settlement. I hired one of the best lawyers in the town, a little expensive, but I hope it's worth it. He assured me he would save me the alimony because Bonnie earned a substantially good salary. If not more, he asked me to remove Bonnie as my nominee from all kinds of legal documents and insurance, that is still in process. So, yeah, that's all the update I have for now. Thanks again for all the support, I look forward to the comments, both good and bad. Update 2, I have quite an update this time. As I mentioned in my last post, I had almost sorted out all the stuff before serving her the divorce papers. The divorce papers were in. Before that, I had thought of various ways of bursting her bubble, but when the time actually came, all I wanted was peace. I wanted to silently move out. I did the same. When she was at work, I packed all my stuff, loaded it onto my truck, and moved out. I kept the divorce papers on the dinner table with my lawyer's contact information and a note saying, saved you the time and energy of preparing divorce papers for me. Here you go. By the time she returned home and found the note, I was already in my new apartment in the next town. 
my manager helped me get a transfer to a different office location and found a place nearby. I haven't informed many people about this place, it's just between my brother, my parents, and yes, Ella. We'll come to that in a while. Bonnie contacted me, but I had blocked her from all platforms. I could see her calls and voicemails piling up in the blocked folder. I knew she understood my message, she was no fool. After a while, I got a call from her brother, my friend from college who introduced Bonnie to the group. I didn't respond to him. He sent me an angry voicemail, asking me to talk to Bonnie. It was like, how dare you ghost my sister for your lust. If you don't come clean, I'll hunt you and your filthy mistress wherever you are. You can't hide from me. WTF? I opened some of the messages from Bonnie and found she was accusing me of cheating with Ella. This was just so disgusting. I was saving her reputation, but she was sabotaging mine. Instead of responding to his calls, I sent him the screenshots where Bonnie was discussing with AP about divorcing me. He responded, can we talk? I don't understand what you guys are up to. I said I didn't want to discuss this over the phone and asked him to meet me in the evening. He came, come. I told him I didn't want to involve him because she's his sister. I told him briefly about what had happened between us, not the kind of details I have rambled on here but a summarized version of it. He was shocked that his little sister was up to this. He asked me about Ella. Bonnie had told him that I had ghosted her because of Ella. I told him the truth. I didn't need. To do this yet I showed him the emails and chats where I had stopped all communication with Ella after the confrontation. He was not completely on my side, but he wasn't bitter at me either. He said, I don't know what to do now. I'm at a fix. I said I understand, and you don't need to take sides. He asked if I was serious about the divorce. I said yes, and Bonnie was also planning for the same, so it's better we separate amicably. That's all has happened until now. Update 3, this is going to be a shorter one. After meeting me, Bonnie's brother clarified the matter to her parents. Apparently, Bonnie and her parents were blaming him for introducing me into her life, so he revealed the whole truth, and eventually, Bonnie also confessed the same to him. He texted and apologized to me. Bonnie tried to involve her parents and her brother to get a better divorce settlement for me, but they all left her alone to deal with her spouse. She demanded a huge alimony, but my lawyer was harsh. Since she was earning quite well, he didn't let her have anything from me. After a lot of back and forth on the settlement terms, the divorce was finalized. I haven't had any updates about her since then. Last week, her brother called me. During the divorce and even after that, he sometimes used to text me, but it was just about checking up on each other. We never discussed Bonnie. This time he brought her up first. He asked me about Ella. Honestly, I downplayed my emotions and said we were not sure yet. He told me that Bonnie's condition had deteriorated and she had to be taken into therapy. AP has ditched her. There's no better way to say this, but AP realized that she's a swinger who jeopardized her stable marriage into a cheap thrill show, and he cannot trust that woman. He had promised Bonnie that he would divorce his wife once our divorce was settled, but he ditched her at the last moment. Good for him. He dodged a bullet. I'm not sure if his wife knows about this entire thing. Bonnie is not a fool to have not reached out to her. I'm sure she would have. She would have tried all means to destroy AP's life after he betrayed her, but I don't know anything about it, and neither I asked her brother about it. About me, I have settled quite well in this new town, upgraded my car, have set up the house, not a fancy one but a cozy tiny place just matching my taste. Oh yes, I missed out on giving the details about Ella and the last update. So yeah, we are together now. After my last meeting with her where she wanted to stay out of it, I didn't contact her but she sometimes used to text me to check upon my well-being. Gradually, we started talking regularly, and I gave her updates about my divorce and stuff. We are not an official couple yet. But I find her very mature and understanding, the kind of people I'm into. We are yet to confess our feelings to each other, but unofficially, we are a thing already, and I think she feels the same about me. She had subtly told me that she's looking for a monogamous relationship, and in no circumstances would she tolerate any sort of polygamy. I assured her that I'm also of the same morals and that whatever I did in the past was for the sake of my love for Bonnie and to save my marriage. I know she would need time to trust my words, and I completely understand her. I also want to take it slow. Tomorrow is Ella's birthday, and she wishes to celebrate it with special children in the childcare home. 
I have made all the arrangements, and it's going to be a surprise for her. I'm sure she's going to love it. She really loves children and is also associated with the NAS, working for children with special needs. So yeah, I'm looking forward to having a good time with her. Now, on to the next story. Story 2. I discovered my wife cheating on me after she went out at night with her best friend. So, I caught her red-handed with her app. So, my 27M wife, 24F, often goes out on a Friday night with her best friend and usually doesn't get back until 4am. The place she goes to closes then, so no big deal. Every time she's been out, she's always come back. It does slightly bother me that she's out every Friday and never gets back until so late, as we do have three-year-old twins, and it seems irresponsible, but that's for another discussion. Anyway, this Friday she went out as usual, and I woke up, and she wasn't there, even though it was 6.30am. So, I texted her and called her to see where she was. She had not sent a single message to me all night and had not indicated in any way that she would be staying out, so naturally, I was worried sick. Roll forward to 8am, and I got a text saying, Sorry babe, I stayed at a friend's house last night. Now, I know this person, and I wasn't too bothered just slightly pissed off that she never thought to say anything before. Roll forward to Saturday night. I was on her iPad, as we shared it, and suddenly these strange messages came through from her best friend saying, where did you go last night? I'm so upset that you just left me. Now, I was confused as to why she would have said this, as I assumed she had gone to her other friends with her. So yes, I know this was wrong, curiosity got the better of me. I checked my messages and stumbled upon a conversation where she mentioned staying over at some guy's house. Instantly, I was consumed by anger and confusion. Confronting my wife, she confessed, attributing her actions to being intoxicated and claiming nothing happened. Despite her assurances, doubts lingered. Could someone really just crash at another person's place after a drunken night out? The pieces didn't quite fit together, leaving me torn on what steps to take next. Divorce seems to be the logical choice for many, but it's not a decision to be made lightly, especially considering the impact on our children. This behavior is new, surfacing only after she started her new job and befriended someone. While I sympathize with her stress and depression, I realize I've been too lenient. It's time to assert myself and demand honesty and accountability moving forward, 